Good evening, uh, fellow Toastmasters. Um, as uh, has already been alluded to, I am speaking for the first time tonight about a subject that I know a lot about, and that is me. Uh, and as I was thinking about the subject, I was thinking, this group really only knows my name. They don't know what makes me tick. So tonight's uh, six-minute speech is going to dive into the many layers of Steve Elliott and um, I remind you the emergency exits are that way if you need to be <laughs> on the road and, and uh, being scared. But um, my attire uh, kind of symbolizes uh, where I've been, a uh, 24-year veteran of retail. I know what most of you are thinking. He was four years old when he started. <laughs> my parents would put me through child labor, but no, I was a little older when I started in uh, retail. What I loved about retail was the constant change. I loved that every day was different, that customers would have different requests, and just when I thought I'd heard it all, somebody else would come with a curveball, and I really got um, excited about trying to solve people's problems. That translated into a manager role in retail, where now I was dealing with associate curveballs and associate issues, and trying to find a way to make our team provide that customer service that I truly believed in. So that was 24 years of my professional life, and I truly did enjoy uh, being in retail, but now as I'm at Toastmasters, I'm looking to transition to another world. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so my first layer, no, I didn't, I'm not going to be a professional hockey player, uh, but my first layer is when I started to think about myself, I started to kind of go back into my childhood and remember what were my first childhood memories? and. What I came up with was, yes, I am an insufferable Toronto Maple Leaf fan. So, um, what does that show about my character? Well, I'm an eternal optimist. <laughs> I truly believe in, we'll get them next year, uh, every time it's been uttered for the last 40 years of my life. Um, my fondest childhood memories are of Saturday nights, me and my dad sitting in front of the TV, uh, me wearing my replica Lenny McDonald <coughs> jersey, uh, watching the Leafs go down and loss, I mean, uh, rise to victory again. <laughs> and um, now that I have two boys of my own, it makes Saturday nights even more special for me. Uh, unfortunately, I lost my dad uh, 20 years ago, so I'm not able to kind of connect with him, but it you know, makes the Saturday nights I spent with him more cherished, and it also gives me fresh perspective into uh, what it's like to be a dad, and I just love that part of my life as well. So, eternal optimist, always looking for the positive of things, and um, you're all dying to know what's <laughs> up next. <laughs> <laughs> so the next layer okay. is not Las Vegas. It's the king of rock and roll. I am a huge Elvis Presley fan. Uh, never had sideburns, but I did try to have some of his mannerisms from time to time. Catherine alluded to, he is an idol of mine. So sometimes you may see me sneer the lip a little bit, or you may see me strike a pose. Uh, that's just the Elvis and me coming out. Um, for those that are wondering, I have been to Mecca. That's Graceland in Memphis, mm -hmm. Tennessee, for those non Elvis fans. Uh, three times. Uh, the last time was probably my most cherished time there, and that was because we had three generations. Uh, my mom, myself, and my then six-year-old son. Uh, I brainwashed him at a very young age to like Elvis, and uh, he uh, loved the King's music. So when we po proposed the idea of going down to Memphis, he was all for it, and uh, all of us went. And it, again, you know, I talk about the Maple Leaf memory of being with my dad. That was a very special moment for me to share with my mom and my son down in. Uh, in Memphis. Um, when I started to think about where did my love of Elvis come from, it came from my mom. She was a big fan. Uh, she now says that I've surpassed her in my um, idling of the king. Uh, my basement is, some would say, a shrine to Elvis. Uh, <laughs> pictures and knickknacks and you name it, I've got it. I have a cherished vinyl Elvis collection that I still <clears throat> listen to on occasion. Um, what I connected to with the King, 
I love his versatility. I love that uh, he could sing gospel, he could sing rhythm and blues, he could sing country, he could sing rock. Uh, he appealed to so many different people. He's the only performer in uh, all the Music Hall of Fames. So you'll find him in the Gospel Music Hall of Fame, the Country Music Hall of Fame, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And he's the only uh, living, or the only performer to do that. So uh, his versatility uh, certainly uh, kind of uh, speaks to me. I also like his creativity, uh, the fact that he was a creative person. I, uh, too, enjoy being creative, and uh, hopefully this speech tonight has shown you that I can be a little creative and off the wall with my things, and I think um, that reflects in the King as well, that he was always kind of pushing the envelope, doing different things, and, and really um, uh, making an impact on society. And that kind of leads me back to my conclusion, which is just that I would... Um, you know, I'm transitioning out of the retail world. I want to get into training and development world because I do want to make an impact. Um, maybe not as grandiose as the king, but I want to make an impact on my society. And I think the best way to do that is with um, training and development. So that's where I'm going with my uh, professional life now. I thank you for your time, and uh, you'll have more from me in future speeches. Thank you.